Hello, I'm Inojo, a third-year PhD student at MIT. Today, I'm going to talk about breakwater, which is an overload control enabling microsecond-scale RPCs to achieve high throughput and low tail latency at the same time. This is a joint work with my colleagues and advisors at MIT. Over the decade, network and storage get faster and in-memory operations become more prevalent. A single home network latency is now less than five microseconds. Write operation on storage take less than 20 microseconds. And applications with in-memory operations like Memcached, Redis, or Apache Ignite become more popular. Thanks to faster network and storage and more prevalent in-memory operations, Many RPCs now only take microseconds of the request processing time in modern data centers. With microsecond scale RPCs, data center applications are often implemented with multiple RPCs for better maintenance and reliability. For example, a web service may have RPCs for accessing disaggregated memory, encryption, caching, and storage. With such a fan out traffic pattern, low tail latencies are especially important to provide low response time to the user. However, achieving low tail latency is challenging because of the server overload. RPC servers get overloaded by various reasons, including load imbalance, unexpected user traffic, packet bursts, or redirect to traffic due to failure. To see what happens in the performance without overload control, we measure the throughput and latency with different clients' demands by varying the request generation rate from 1,000 clients. We use the synthetic workload with exponential service time distribution with a 10 microsecond average. Both throughput and latencies are measured at the client side, and latencies are measured by the time from the request creation to the response arrival, including client side queuing delay. If an RPC server is overloaded without proper overload control, throughput degrades because more CPUs are used for packet processing and request parsing, and less CPUs are used for business logic. And tail latency, even median latency, skyrockets. As a result, when the server is overloaded, even though the server is making some progress, almost all requests violate its SLO. Because an empty request queue at the server wastes the resources and degrades the throughput, and large queue increases the RPC latency. In order to achieve both high throughput and low latency at the same time, an ideal overload control should keep the request queue short, but not empty at all times. Instead of the building of the queue at the server side, the access request should be queued at the client, as the clients have more flexibility with the request unlikely to be served within SLO. With access load queued at the clients, clients can learn the server overload quickly and react to it in proper way. For example, they can send those requests to another replica or degrade the service quality by issuing less requests. One strongman approach to achieve this is a server-side AQM. If the request queue grows large, the server can drop the request and notify the clients. However, with microsecond scale RPCs, request drop is expensive because the cost of the processing packets and the parsing the request is comparable to the request execution time. An alternative strongman design is a client-side rate limiting. Based on the proved service data, 
clients cannot adjust its request sending rate in a decentralized way. However, it requires clients to have a fresh view of the server status to react to the congestion without delay. This leads to additional message overhead to prove the server status. To make the problem worse, the message overhead increases with more number of the clients. In this work, we present Breakwater, an overload control scheme for microsecond scale RPCs, which employs credit-based admission control to coordinate the request with minimum delay, demand speculation to minimize the message overhead, and delay-based AQM on short queue to ensure low tail latency at all times. Breakwater effectively handles server overload with microsecond scale RPCs. As shown in the figures below, it achieves high throughput and low and bounded tail latency. In addition, Breakwater is scalable to a large number of the clients. Let me dive into the details how Breakwater achieves this. In Breakwater, we use request queuing delay as a congestion signal. Request queuing delay is measured by the elapsed time between when the request arrives and when the request starts to be processed. If the queuing delay exceeds the target delay, which is derived from SLO, breakwater regards the server is overloaded. With request queuing delay as a congestion signal, Breakwater controls the amount of the incoming request using credit-based admission control, inspired by recent network congestion control in data center. For credit-based admission control, each RPC server maintains a pool of credits. The number of the credits in the credit pool is adjusted based on whether the server is overloaded or not. For every RTT, if the queuing delay is less than the target, that is, if the server is not overloaded, it auditively increases the number of the credits. Otherwise, if the server is overloaded with the queuing delay exceeding the target, it reduces the number of the credits with the scaled multiplicative factor. The server maintains a list of the clients who issues request to the server. When a new client joins and wants to subscribe the credits, it sends a register message to the server. Upon receiving the register message, the server adds the client to the client list. If a server has available credits in its credit pool, it distributes the credits to the client. The clients are only allowed to send requests with credits. When the server receives the request, it enqueues the request to the request queue and processes it in the first come, first served manner. Once the server starts to process the request, it runs to completion. After the request is processed, the response is sent back to the clients. When the client has no further request and wants to unsubscribe the credits, it sends the register message to the server and the server removes the client from the client list. Credit-based admission control can effectively bound the number of the requests in the request queue with explicit scheduling by credits. However, this naive credit-based admission control has one significant drawback. It requires the server to know how much demand each client has in order to decide to which client and how many credits the server has to issue. This leads to additional demand messages from client to server in order to synchronize up-to-date demand information. Those demand messages introduce additional message overhead to the server, which is significant 
especially with microsecond scale RPCs. Because the client's demand changes frequently as they may give up a request or decide to send a request to another replica. To make the matter worse, the message overhead increases as the number of the clients increases. As a result, even though naive credit-based admission control achieves lower and bounded pay latency, thanks to per request coordination with credits, it cannot achieve high throughput because of the message overhead. Then, how can you eliminate the demand messages while taking advantages of the credit-based admission control? In Breakwater, instead of maintaining full knowledge on client's demand with demand message, all demand information is piggybacked to the request, and the server keeps track of client's demand based on those piggyback demand information. However, because demand information can be delivered only with request, the server may have stale information of some clients. Even though the demand information for some clients are stale, the server distributes the credits based on it. Since client's demand is not perfectly synchronized, clients may receive more credits than its demand. If a client receives more credits than necessary, it holds those credits for the future use. If the server still has available credits after distributing credits based on its latest demand information, it chooses random clients among clients who used up all the credits and issues credits to them, speculating that the clients may have new demand since less advertisement. Demand speculation is our key design choice to provide scalability to a large number of the clients with minimal message overhead. With demand speculation, breakwater can achieve high throughput, but with higher tail latency. What makes the tail latency higher and how can it prevent it? With piggybacking demand information and demand speculation, the clients with no demand may have unused credits. Because those unused credits do not increase the queuing delay at the server in RTT, the server decides to issue more credits to other clients. This leads to the server to issue more credits than it can accommodate, which we refer credit overcommitment. With credit overcommitment, multiple clients can send requests to the server at the same time in the future causing in-cast. When in-cast happens, tail latency becomes higher as the request queuing delay increases. In breakwater, to ensure low tail latency even when in-cast happens, the server drops the request if the queuing delay exceeds the drop threshold. Because breakwater uses delay-based AQM as a safety net by dropping the request only when the request queue grows large with in-cast, it rarely drops the request during operation. For the dropped request, the server sends a reject message immediately to notify the clients of the rejected request. After receiving the reject message, the clients can decide what to do with it. For example, they can retransmit or give up the request. Equipped with all of three key components, credit-based admission control, demand speculation, and delay-based AQM, breakwater achieves high throughput while maintaining low and bounded tail latency. To evaluate the breakwater, we constructed taskbed in Cloud Lab. We implemented breakwater is an RPC library on top of the TCP transport layer over Shenango. We use the synthetic workload 
where an RPC's pin loops specify the amount of the time at the server. Through the evaluation, we answer three key questions. First, does breakwater achieve high throughput and low tail latency even with demand spikes? Second, does breakwater provide fast notification for the rejected requests? And finally, is breakwater scalable to many clients? We compare breakwater's performance with two existing state-of-the-art overload control mechanisms, Dagger and Seta. Dagger is a priority-based overload control scheme used in WeChat microservices, and Seta is an adaptive overload control for staged event-driven architecture, which rarely limits the clients based on measured response time. To compare the breakwater to existing approaches, we define a metric called group put. Group put represents the rate of the responses whose latency is less than SLO. To see how each overload control behaves with sudden demand shift, we generate the load from 1,000 clients, varying the per client demand over time. When the client demand suddenly exceeds the server capacity by 40% at time 4, breakwater instantly converges within less than 20 milliseconds, while both Dagger and Seta experience throughput collapse. Dagger and Seta take a half second and 1.6 seconds to recover from congestion collapse, respectively. Even after the convergence, breakwater achieves 6% higher steady state throughput than Dagger and 5% higher than Seta. The throughput collapse of the Dagger and Seta stems from long queuing delay caused by request queue buildup. During the congestion collapse, almost all requests violate its SLO with Seta and Dagger. By contrast, Breakwater maintains its tail latency around SLO even when the client's demand suddenly exceeds the server capacity. To demonstrate how fast breakwater notifies request drop to the clients, we measure the reject delay, the time from request issue to reject message arrival at the client. Breakwater delivers reject message to the client before violating its SLO even when the server is overloaded so that the clients can do something for the rejected request. On the other hand, Baker's rejection message is delayed up to a few hundreds of the milliseconds during condition collapse, which make clients hard to distinguish whether the request is taking too long time to process or the server is congested. Note that as Seta doesn't drop the request at the server, there is no reject messages for Seta in normal operation. To demonstrate the scalability to a large number of the clients, with fixed client demand of the twice as capacity, we vary the number of the clients and measure the throughput of the three overload controls. Even though all three systems experience throughput degradation as the number of the clients increases, Breakwater demonstrates the least degradation achieving 10% higher throughput compared to Dagger and Seta with 10,000 clients. More experiment results, including the one with the real application and various workloads are available in the paper. Let me conclude the talk. Breakwater is a server-driven, credit-based overload control device for microsecond scale RPCs. With credit-based admission control, demand speculation, and delay-based AQM, breakwater achieves low and bounded tail latency with high throughput, fast notification for the rejected request, and scalability to many clients. We believe that breakwater is an important step towards the overload control over more complex data center applications with multiple hierarchy of microservices.